Welcome to the Talk to Your Leader show by Indian School of Democracy. There was a boy lived in a rural village called Manimala in the Kottayam district of Kerala. One day, his school head called his parents and said, Your kid is the dumbest in the school. He is not going to pass in the 10th exam. But at last, this boy managed to pass the exam with just 42 percent marks then he moved to the river side of manimala and pondered what is the purpose of life what i am going to do after this then he decided to make a difference he eventually became a civil servant he was an ias officer then he became an mla and an mp and a minister of india let's welcome sri kg alphonse kannandanam member of parliament and the former minister Thank you very much sir for giving this opportunity to have a word with you. You were a very well known figure in bureaucracy. You were admired by a lot of people. But one day you suddenly decided to choose politics as your area of work. Choose politics as your area of work. What was the reason behind your decision to become a politician? Um see I spent 20 year 27 years in the IAS. Uh, why did I get into the IAS to begin with? So it's a bit of history why I joined politics. I was looking around when I was in the university. Um, I said I must get into a job which gives me the power to change, uh, to bring happiness into the lives of people. So I said I want to be the change agent. Yeah, I want to make a difference. So I said to make a difference, what is the best opportunity? I said IAS is the best opportunity. That's why first of all I got into the IAS. Um, Uh, in 1979 for more for most people ias is a final destination the moment you cross the gates of the ias academy in masuni their life ambitions are fulfilled and uh, and uh, a lot of people stop listening to people but once you get in masuni academy we believe that we are god's creation specially chosen so we become basically very very arrogant for me that was just a beginning i said i want opportunities to reach out to people the only reason why i'm in the ias is to be the voice of the voiceless to help people who can't help themselves so that's what i've tried to do in the ias for uh, 27 years when i was in the service then i quit uh so right from my first job as a subcontractor of a munar that's in uh, indicate district in kerala munar is pretty famous I was out in the villages with people but I was I had a rickety old uh, jeep you know today sub collectors begin with uh, you know us and all that I didn't even have a car I had this rickety old jeep which used to break down so often and I used to be driving so often and out of my huge territory of uh, more I think almost 75% of EDQ district which is a very large district was in my subdivision and uh, most of the road 90% of the roads were not black topped and there was no street connection to the district collector so you would meet him once in two months or something so basically one was left to learn the job oneself nobody to teach very hard terrain and uh, people out in the mountains and uh, villages which had very little access i mean i'm talking about 1979 so one really had to travel out i used to be out 25 days a month at least 20 days a month i was newly married my wife was in the kind of middle of a forest with elephant trench all around so i left my newly married wife and a maid and then i used to travel 20 days a month so uh, i've been very close to people right from the beginning try to find my own solutions um, i try to interpret the law Uh, for the benefit of the people i said law doesn't exist for the sake of law it has to be interpreted to help people who are helpless and i never told anybody all my life you know this is what the law says i can't help you know if necessary i would break the law i would tell you just one instance uh, this is when i was a district collector of kota m that was 88 to 91 or almost three and a half four years uh, two young people walked into my office and uh, they said there is a two and a half year old child is dying he needs blood transfusion that's what the doctors have said but the parents will not allow that because they believe in a religious sect which does not permit a blood transfusion so i could have told them look here i know the law and there is nothing in the law which uh, gives power to the district collector and the district magistrate to intervene in this case i can't force the parents to treat a minor child 
No, but uh, what I did was within a minute I called my secretary and I gave him dictation. Just three lines. I said, "This child has a right to live, irrespective of the religious beliefs of the parents. Take the child into custody and treat him in the medical college." So this was my, I think, two uh, sentence letter to the sub inspector SHO of a police station. So they took the child into custody. The parents were custody. He was treated at Kottayam Medical College, and he survived. Of course, they went and filed a writ petition against me in the High Court, thousand pages because it's a global organization which has the same philosophy. We shall not have blood transfusion. High Court upheld my order. They came to Supreme Court. The Supreme Court upheld my order. That's what I'm saying. Create the law. I mean, this is what we IAS officers are meant for. Don't say, "Well, so I can't do anything." So never ever say, "I can't do anything to a poor man." Break the law when it's necessary. Never break the law for a rich man. I've never done that. Like this morning, also somebody called up and said, "Need a ticket for somebody who is a very rich man. So will you help?" I said, "No. If he's a rich man, doesn't need my help. <laughs> if he's a poor man, you tell me, I can help." So that's been my attitude. So from um, um, I was district director of Kottayam, which is a very exciting uh, job which I had. Uh, we pioneered the literacy movement uh, in Kottayam in 1989. We became the first. 100% literate town in uh, India. You know, basically, you know how I got these ideas. I won't say I'm a very, I, I'm a genius in terms of coming up with ideas. No, I listen to people. Had a habit of I said after nine o'clock in the evening, in my collector's bungalow, anybody can walk in for a coffee and uh, we'll share ideas. And I had lots of people coming in. So that's how the whole idea of um, um, uh, this literacy thing came up. And in fact, uh, uh, the Vice Chancellor of Gandhi University, uh, he walked into my house one day after dinner, and he said, uh, "Alfonso, our analysis has come up with this idea of uh, converting Kottayam into a 100% literate town. So, can you coordinate? Because we need the collector to coordinate." <clears throat> I said, "Fine." So that's how I got involved. We got every citizen of Kottayam involved with this. It became the most fashionable subject of discussion in Kottayam. Even for those who are from the richest family, the most famous family, not to be involved in literacy was a was a sin. So we made the most unfashionable topic into the most fashionable topic. Got every citizen involved. We had 14,000 volunteers, out of which 12,000 were women. No money from the government. I think government had given about three lakhs or something like that to the NSS. Otherwise, we raised. Huge money. All these volunteers were poor people. They traveled on their own. Came. Teaching at midnight, so this became such a huge people's moment. We succeeded, and uh, eventually this became a, a model for the whole of India and for uh, for the for, for the world. Similarly, one day uh, an 80-year-old lady walks into my home, and um, because I see visitors in the morning, uh, this is for people who are employed and you know who are daily wages uh, laborers. Who need to go to work so they can see me early morning? I see them from six o'clock in the morning. So one of these lady turns up and says, "You know, where were you all? This is the third time I'm coming to your office. I had to change bus thrice, and you know I can't come alone. I need to seek uh, the neighbor's help to get to do a bus. Change bus thrice, came here try twice, and you were not here. Where were you?" And finally, a big dialogue like in a movie. She says, "Government is giving you a car. Why can't you come and see me in my village?" What would be the reaction of most? Uh, District collectors and IAs of it. They would say, call the security and say, throw this lady out. Who the hell is she to question? <laughs> you know, and then to say that you must come and see me, see me in my village. Uh, I smiled, and in the evening I discussed this with my wife, and um, I said it's not a bad idea for the collector to go around with other officials. So we planned this thing out called um, mass contact program. In fact, in Malayalam it's called Jalangal Lake. Oh, later, later, Uman Jandi adopted it as the mass contact program and got award from United Nations for the best governance practice and good governance. That's quite surprising. Later, in fact, this uh, term of terminology was coined by Kanam Rajendran, who is a CPI General Secretary, because in the first program, we didn't have a name for the program. So, in the program, when I was sitting with him uh, during the function, I asked him, "Let's give it a name." So he said, "Janangal Lake," you know. So that name stuck. So the idea was very simple. We would select a panchayat, two panchayats actually, and we would select a school in the middle and say, "We are coming to that school on such and such a date, and we'll be available the whole day." Anybody who has any petition against government, any grievance against government, please file it in the panchayat, and we'll give you a token, and we'll tell you 
and we leave them a reply saying come to room number so and so even the room number would be mentioned collector would be in room number one sp would be in room number two so you need something like 50 rooms so even the room number mentioned what time we would give 15 days time to file these petitions and then i would get all the petitions and my collected staff would sit through the night without my intervention sit through the night and and uh, have it sorted out department wise and then i would send a dio letter to the sp saying here are 100 petitions pertaining to the police department please inquire into this and come to this room on such and such a date such and such a time so uh, 50 letters go to all the heads of departments and then on the appointed day how many people land up? The entire district administration lands up in the pancha, in the, that school. Starts up early morning, 8 o'clock. I generally expect the local MLA, there are ministers from that place also to be there, but then there are no long speeches. It will be introductory, it will be only inauguration, it will be only maximum 10 minutes, ideally 7 minutes, with the minister saying, I inaugurate. And then it's back to the rooms, and at lunch time, there will be something like 10,000 people. And you will be surprised, we used to get something like 5,000 petitions from two panchayats. So, 10,000 people for lunch, the panchayat would provide the lunch. It's our mass movement. Panchayat people get together, they cook together, they serve together. And the night it is over, the whole program is over by around 8 o'clock. Then there is an explanatory meeting. Starting with the ADM on behalf of the collector has to come up on the stage and explain what is the action taken on each petition. So, this goes on generally till midnight. And people can ask questions. The way you dispose it of is not right. So, there was also, a, even though there were 10,000 people, it was a, basically a very communicative kind of a program. So, in each of these programs also, after it was disposed of by the district officer, if they were not happy, there was already an appellate um, authority sitting on that. That appellate authority also would be there. Yeah, so there are two levels of disposal right there itself. Whoever was not satisfied, could go to the appellate authority there itself and then if they are not satisfied they could raise it in the in the meeting so we did this over the entire district i had about what 72 panchayats in my um, uh, district and also the corporations in the municipalities we held only for the municipality i covered the entire district twice and this again became global model when umanjani became chief minister he introduced it again and then it won the highest un award for the best global practice where did the idea come from? came from an 8 year old lady by questioning the collector and saying why don't you come and meet me in my, in my, office, in my village you know so ideas come from people um, so we had a very exciting time another time you see the superintendent of the medical college caught him he said we don't have a cancer hospital in this area let's build one I said where is the money? he said people will contribute yeah he used to be a regular feature Dr. PGR very uh, man with a lot of ideas. So then we got into a discussion with some magazine from Kotaim, very famous one, and they said they will promote these new cover stories, and then they will increase the price of the magazine by X number of, you know, paisa, uh, which will go towards our cancer center. So they didn't raise too much money. I think they raised less than ten lakhs, but it became such a huge public affair where everybody became aware of cancer and cancer is curable and we were building this center with public contribution not one rupee from the government so you'd be shocked we got contribution from 82 lakh people for my cancer hospital Kotaim has much much less number of people not even half of that so people from all over the world contributed and then people would come and come to the center to see how it was coming up you know person who contributed only one rupee or five rupees he would feel it's my cancer center he would come on a pilgrimage and come and see how his cancer center was being built up. So, IAS is a job where you have incredible possibility for innovative ideas. Government gives that office of freedom to do things. So, we did a lot of things together. So, I won the Best Collector Award thrice. Yeah, thrice. Worked very hard. I was very, very popular. I don't think anybody ever opposed me in my district. Um, so it was a great time to be do things with people, interact with them, give a lot of respect to my local people. I mean, even when the panchayat member comes, I stand up and receive them, give them a coffee. And you would be surprised, in 27 years of my IAs, no politician has ever interfered in my job. From court time, of course, I went to went as civil supplies director for a short six months, after which I was removed from that job and sent exiled to Delhi without my consent. You know why? Because I wrote the dissenting note in the famous Palmolin uh, case. 
in which a chief minister karnagar and later his officers are accused and the case is still going on i wrote the dissenting note saying there was no tender there was no transparency in the process so i wrote the dissenting note and then i was sent off to delhi came to delhi i said what the hell is happening i didn't want to come to delhi because my children were very young uh, delhi was polluted even those days anyway i came under protest and then that's where i became famous um we demolished 14310 illegal mansions in delhi i never demolish slums because where will the poor people go my wife started a project in the slums in the biggest slum nanglamachi in delhi where uh, we set up a school a tailoring center a toilet complex and a school yeah 30000 people there was not one toilet can you imagine so my wife was going early morning every day coming back in the evening we built a nice uh, uh, clinic there i had great fun of course we were all under threat because the first building i demolished in delhi was you know what was the size two lakh square feet big mafia the biggest mafia leader in delhi hkl bhagat then 1984 fame guy and um, funny parties the day after i demolished this, i met him at the function and he came and hugged me and he said congratulations you are my friend because he said you are the only one with the guts to take on me <laughs> so it's strange he became my friend so we were under huge security threat my children used to go to school under police protection i carried a gun all the time 24 hours uh, my wife went to the slum under police protection but still we were beaten up my wife was beaten up and left for dead in a pool of blood my children were beaten up but that's all very exciting if i ask my children what is your exciting moment in your life they would say they would say when we got beaten up so we never felt scared no no i think was much younger i think when you are young you are never scared of anything i mean this is what i keep telling people have a bike bonia yeah. the most important equipment in your in your entire structure is your not your brain not your heart it's your backbone the ability to stand up for truth stand up for responsibility any job which you get is a, is a job given by god if you are a believer or by destiny if you are not a believer so you have no excuses you can't say i i never told anybody no the system doesn't allow me to do that this is the excuse of a lot of bureaucrats no system doesn't problem you know you are the system you have to bring about the changes so don't blame the system you can do anything there were no demolitions up before me no demolitions after me so why did i do it because i believe it's my job to do it and i can assure you not one inch of my land was in and of course um, i used to make these uh, fake threats i'm calling them fake i said you and you touch one inch of my land i said i will shoot you and you know i i carry a gun and everybody took, takes me very seriously so that is a great advantage i have so um, nobody encroach